Om Shri Sairam. We will start today's session with three Omkars. Oh. 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 Om Shri Sai Ram, offering my humble pranams at the Divine Lotus Feet of Mother Sai. I welcome you all to the 20th edition of the live satsang. We will be joining by Brother Haresh Mirpuri for sharing his divine experiences with Bhagwan. It's my privilege to introduce Brother Haresh Mirpuri. Brother Harish Mirpuri hails from Bangalore city and considers himself highly blessed to be born to his parents who have led him to the lotus feet of our beloved Bhagwan. The music college that we see in Prashant Inilayam bears the name of Brother Harish's family, that is Sri Satya Sai Mirpuri College of Music. Harish was fortunate to be handpicked by Swami himself to join his school in Wooty in 1980. Swami then brought him closer by moving his school to Puttapati in 1981. Post his schooling, he went on to do his bachelor's in commerce degree from Brindavan campus of Swami's university and continued to complete his MBA from Prashant in 1993. During his student days, Swami blessed him with many opportunities to participate in music programs, drama, and sports. He was also selected by Swami to accompany him to Chennai, Uti, and Kodekanal trips between the year 1991 and 93. Post completion of his studies, Swami asked him to join his father's business abroad. Swami then brought him back to India in 1995 and personally guided him in the construction of Sai Lakshmi Industries in Bengaluru. Post construction, Swami inaugurated the factory in 96 and visited his home and spent time with the family over meals. Bhagwan also named Harish's son as Som Shekhar. When the time was ripe, Harish and his father were the chosen instruments of Bhagwan to set up the music college in Prashantinilayam, which was inaugurated on the eve of Swami's 76th birthday in 2001. With this, I hand over to Brother Harish Mirpuri to share with us the divine experiences of Bhagwan. Over to you, Brother Sairam. Sairam, um, I first of all offer my loving pranams at our beloved uh, Swami's lotus feet, who has guided all of us through and through, whether we believe or not, it is since our childhood days. Those of us who feel we knew Swami only a few years ago will realize by now that Swami knew them for many, 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 many lives. I've always thanked Swami to, for having blessed me to be born to parents who are so spiritually inclined, uh, who have always guided me and shown me the path that my path is to follow Swami. There is no other path. In fact, I remember in my, my sixth standard when my father and mother told me that your path is Swami. And if you leave him, there is no space anywhere else in the world for you. And I knew that this had to be my path. I'm always grateful to them. I offer my pranams to them. Respected elders, those who are with us over here, and my dear sisters and brothers. Uh, this is a wonderful occasion for us all to be able to share things that we experience uh, with Swami, to be able to share what we learn from Swami. It's so beautiful when we come together, Swami said the path of satsang or good company is one of the highest spiritual path. And I, and I 
just had the pleasure of watching my classmates, brother Arunesh and brother Ravi Kumar in the talk just before this, in their talk. Swami's school, Swami's students are such that we reconnect in a moment. And the common point of connection is Swami's love, not merely friendship. This Swami's love that carries us through, through all of us, is very, very, very powerful. We may not meet for years, but then we see each other, that love is faster than probably even the 5G uh, internet that we are all looking forward to receive next year, probably. It's instant. It gives us an emotion. An internet can give only a connection, but this connection of Swami's love can give you that sacred feeling, that emotion. Uh, it's a connection of love, which is the most powerful connection in the world. Before I go into any other thing, let me just share a few things, a few initial experiences uh, when we were as kids. So Swami, we've had the good fortune since, since the second half of 78 to 80 to go and visit Swami with our parents. During one such visit, we landed up in Bangalore. Those days, the flights from Jakarta was a little bit uh, longer. We used to have to go from Jakarta, Singapore, then Singapore, Chennai, then stay the night, then get a flight and then drive, uh, you know, take a taxi and then go to uh, Puttaparthi. During one such visit, we landed up in Bangalore a little late because, you know, flight delays were taken for granted. And we left Puttaparthi at about uh, we left Bangalore for Puttaparthi at about five in the evening. Uh, during that drive over there, uh, somewhere halfway, those days, I think it took three and a half, four hours, not like nowadays from Bangalore to Puttaparthi in two, two hours, 15 minutes. So in those days, used to take three and a half hours or four hours to go to Puttaparthi. Road was not so wonderful. And you know, it started pouring somewhere closer towards the hills when we were off the road into the smaller roads, you know. Uh, it poured so hard, so hard that we couldn't see more, even 20, 25 meters ahead of us. And the driver was very, very scared. My father just told us all to chant the mantra, Gayatri mantra, and we were chanting. It poured even harder. And during that visit, uh, when we were stuck there in the middle of nowhere, you know, uh, we heard some drumming sound and uh, the driver was even more scared. He looked at my father and it said, Saab, there is decoids here. And, uh, you know, and my father always had this implicit faith in Swami and he said, they told those of us who were children who were awake that chant the Gayatri Mantra. And we all were chanting Om Bhurva Swa. My father was just praying. He was saying Baba, Sai Ram, Sai Ram. And from nowhere, suddenly there was a bus that was fully lit. And it just came from behind. It paved the light for us. And we didn't know where it was going, but out of intense faith in Swami, my father told the driver, quickly follow the bus. And, you know, the car just went behind, went behind, went behind the bus. And until it reached the point where we could recognize we were already in Puttaparthi. And the lights went off and we couldn't see the bus anymore. The driver was so shocked, so shocked, he literally stopped the car and he, my father said, what happened to you? What happened to you? He said, Saab, aap dekha nahi. So my father said, kya hai? Ha, wo bus tha, wo bus tha, fully lit tha, kya hua? So suddenly, uh, he said, Saab, wo bus mein, wo pura lit hai, lekin driver nahi tha, koi bhi nahi tha us bus mein. And we knew that there was only one driver over there, that is Swami, who brought us to Puttaparthi. 
we reached very late in those days you know uh, swami did inform shri kutum rao ji that we were coming and he quickly had arranged a room for us all we were there in the room and the next day morning we came for the darshan and swami called us for an interview and his first question to us is how was the bus and this is how swami brings us to him shows his mercy to us tells us that he is always with us we just have to call out for him in another beautiful interview when we were in whitefield swami called us you know that was probably our first interview with swami and swami called us together and we don't know why we were, we all sat down and all of us were just crying and crying and crying so much swami is looking at us waiting to talk to us and we were crying and we were crying and then swami was telling you know there was another couple from indonesia who was there and looking at them and saying they are very happy bahut khushi hai and that's why they're crying and trust me maybe we were there 30 40 minutes crying and swami wasn't talking was looking at us laughing and then uh, we we as a family enjoy a lot the sweets the you know from uh, a sweet called mawa which is uh, milk based sweet and knowing that uh, you know being the mother that is, he is he turned his hands and he created and so much hot 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 mawa came on his hand and he distributed that to all of us it's incredible that a we we didn't even tell swami anything we haven't even got to talk but swami knew his children's love for this particular sweet he could have given us laddu that we all get he could have given us anything but he chose to give this sweet that was a favorite amongst our family and that started showing that wow you know we don't have to tell he 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 knows the inside the inside of each one of us and brings that forward to tell us that i know you i know you you know and swami told now you all go back come back again the next day true enough swami called us the next day and swami looks at my mother and say meera kaise hai swami uh, my father looked at uh, swami and said swami uh, wife ka naam geeta hai swami looked at him and said kya ra swami ko nahi malum shaadi se pehle kya naam tha and true enough my mother's maiden name is meera and swami again through his immense power through his through his immense love is telling us that i know you from before maybe before even you think you know me i already know you he went on to relate to my father his life about how regularly my father prays in the gurudwara the time the you know prayers he sang and uh, it just floored all of us that here is somebody we are meeting that we wish to hold on to god and is telling us i am there with you i've been there with you it's it's a form this is a form that i've taken but your prayers were always coming to me you may not have seen me in this form but whatever form you saw me i was there listening to you that is our first real in family's introduction to who swami is we were we were clear from that day that for us if somebody asks who is swami to you is not guru is not nothing is our god it's as simple as that to us the definition of god is swami uh, he who knows everything our past our present he who leads us into a good future you know who who guides us who makes us experience you know recent just in the previous talk brother arunesh said swami is like a goldsmith absolutely he'll come into that i'm sure but uh, that's the way our god is with us because his 
his purpose his purpose for each one of us is our own evolution to godhood there is no other purpose. his creation of this mawa is telling us about his knowledge of us is not for us to be convinced that he is god it is only a form of attraction so that he leads us into the right path and what a beautiful way for us as a family to be blessed to begin in that way swami asked me where are you going and i said swami um, in 1979 so me uh, i'm going to join i was very excited i'd always wanted to study in india my father and my mother had instilled that that education in those days indonesia was not so great for english based education and so do your education in india we want you to know the culture we want you to know the country at the end of it you know we are indians you must not forget your base so i was very excited i got into Uh, the school lovedale and i was accepted so i was telling swami i'm going to uti school so swami looked at uh, me and said ah me hamara school mein jata hai i didn't know there was a sai school in uti or there's a sai school at all so we were quiet so i said swami uti school mein jana hai ah hamara school mein jao and then in 1980 when we went again to swami swami said to go to uti he said go and join what class have you finished i said swami in jatata i finished fifth grade now i'm going to sixth grade he said ha go and join my school in uti and uh, you wait over there i've made arrangements you meet principal so we went you know so what arrangements swami just sent us you know to uti we went to uti and went uh, you know we had those days babu taxi he knew that there was a satya sai school nandanwanam in uti so you know and he said i'll take you there so we went there we met uh, whom we lovingly always call as mother mrs verma and uh, she looked at me and said yes swami said you all were coming what class have you finished you know and i said uh, you know my brother had finished uh, second and i uh, told you know i finished uh, fifth standard she said so uh, you've told swami you finished fifth i said yes i mean my parents said yes and uh, she said but we don't have sixth standard here is only grade 1 to 5 i understand for sumil your brother but what do i do with you she said anyway swami did send word he is coming and he has made arrangements for you all to stay in das prakash hotel and uh, you stay there let's see what swami why swami has sent you here we'll follow whatever he says we were first of all excited swami was coming to school um, you know to uti and we were going to have darshan in uti school also that was first excitement you know and swami came true enough in 2 3 days came to uti and we were sitting there swami called us for an interview and he looked uh, at mother and said ha kya problem hai she said swami uh, he has completed his fifth standard so he is going to go to sixth standard or yahan par to sixth grade nahi hai acha bas itna problem okay and swami looks at me you know i had the good fortune of as a little boy to be sitting in the interview room in uti in front of his feet swami said boy kya swami ke liye tum fifth standard repeat kar sakta hai i mean for me i didn't know what to answer here is someone i'm convinced as a child that he is my god and as my god does he ask me whether as a kid i mean this if he is god he is the most powerful thing in my universe at the at least you know and why did he have to ask me i just said yes you know but to me i can never i always for those who have heard me before may say i repeat yes i repeat because i remind myself that here is the master of the universe here is here is the energy that supreme energy who can call upon anything with a blink of an eye has the has shown us humility at its most humble way because we accepted him to be our god asking us if for his sake we can repeat i just don't know 
how much more humble or how much better example of humility can this be where he can command and say hey boy do fifth standard alone and we would have said yes swami my father would have said nobody is going to argue but he just captured my soul my heart my everything with that single question you know that for me from that day all i wanted was wow how much more can i get of swami you know and i remember i teased brother ravi till now i when i first day joined swami was in the bhajan session you know and uh, there was a beautiful tamil uh, bhajan or song that ravi as a kid sang to swami and swami was standing right in front throughout the song manna nalam forgive my tamilian i still can't pronounce it well but uh, you know it's so beautiful that i i had brother subhash is the playing the nal as a kid so brilliant in playing nal you know and swami is there enjoying then playing talam and and i said wow this world is something else you know uh, in again in the earlier talk uh, sorry i i will refer to arunesh's talk he said how swami through music love uh, outpours that gives so much of love and i since that day thought oh god there is a path that i can get more and more chance with swami how do i get into that it is through it is through this path and i just fell in love with bhajan's music and things like that from that day you know uh, these are these are small instances of how swami in the most most soft like a mother you know like how how krishna could take yashoda's heart but to each one of our students heart we all have in our own individual way experience how swami took this heart how swami took each one of our hearts into his fold because he he molds us he molds swami has a very long term plan he doesn't have a short term plan swami's path is always long term you know he uh, i always feel that wow what swami does the impact is in 20 years 40 years 50 years it has deeper impact deeper impact deeper impact and that is where swami is so swami then shifted us from uti to the school we were struggling a bit initially in ishwara mai school while swami coming up struggling not for anything struggling in terms of getting swami was setting up and then he brought in we remember our late but very 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 dear uh, professor habu and using professor habu or habu sir we call him uh, very lovingly i i remember every single moment with him swami used him as a tool as his divine tool to bring the school up to a certain standard swami made him being an ex army guy uh, to build a certain discipline to be, mold us in the in the world of fitness he brought in shri krishna lal professor habu he brought in a beautiful set of team that guided all of us to perform on the ground off the ground in academics everything we had to do was to get swami closer and closer to us how to get swami to the school how to get swami to the hostel how to you know perform anything that we do with such reverence that we never forget that we are actually given an opportunity to perform in front of our lord which is the highest we practice so much he used to tell us we practice so hard when a governor comes or when a chief minister comes should we not practice much more harder when the lord himself come who's higher than any of normal human beings you know and he gave us to to into that till the school reached where distinction in academic became a practice it was no longer a surprise that is how swami brought us he swami encouraged all of us to exercise regularly he would come to the sports meet he would you know he would part make us have matches we used to have 
school match versus college match we used to have all sorts of matches yes we used to make some fun about cricket because we didn't run enough in cricket as fast time but he would encourage us all so i mean insisted every student would be a participant in, in sports for sure and then in drama or in music everything you will always see till today that every single student is a participant and that's what swami wanted swami wanted us not to be brilliant academically only but to grow all round to build all round abilities and what better place than you know the campuses that swami create because i realized that when we were there there was no other focus we we always focused on being better and better i remember many many nights many many mornings or whatever time we get practicing harmonium practicing this you know uh, earlier also brother arunesh shared how none of us actually in those days had formal training of music but by daily practice i you know i remember my senior brother bharat dad used to tell me yeah you have to practice 2 hours 3 hours because every note that we play on the harmonium on keyboard has to be perfect it cannot go remember swami is the lord we are playing in front of him nothing should go out you know pandit bhimsan joshi pandit ravi shankar pandit shiv kumar sharma so many great people would come and perform the fact that we as students were allowed to sing every day to play so frequently in front of swami made it our responsibility to actually practice harder so that we played continuously great with swami and swami used to teach us very basic thing he used to tell us those of us who sing bhajans have a great responsibility and bhajan by itself was seva we all know how swami insisted on our lives being a life of seva and bhajan was also one such seva and that seva is through the bhavam through which we sing in the correct voice or in the instrument that we played we had to uplift the energies of those who listen to us to that of godhood it's a big big responsibility a big task that we cannot take and so i used to look at each one of us make sure we play well miss whoever was it little bit out of raga little bit out of notes so i mean would stare because it was a real responsibility by being a bhajan singer we were doing seva to thousands of people to millions of people who were hearing who were listening to recordings who were just wishing to be one time to get that one time chance to hear his name in a song or in a bhajan to feel that bhavam and get connected and have tears flowing out because they are just simply connected to swami so for us everything that we did swami made it very very pertinent that we understand that it was a big responsibility and that we shouldn't take these things lightly and that's how life in the school in the college became it was a passion that we pursued because it gave us that connection to swami because the only purpose that we did anything over there was swami and that's why i always say that whenever we get together it's so powerful because the only connection that we have is not internet it's that love that connects all of us that is unseen that doesn't require wires to go around it is all from the vibrations that we surrender to our lord that he gives us that connection to each one of us in this world that is a most powerful connection and swami used to tell us see i don't have to travel all over the world the world comes to me and that is how how does swami do that just love 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 energy alone there was nothing more greater than that everything else that swami did the creations that he did was only pieces of attractions but people did not stay because swami created a ring for them people did not stay on and work so hard on life because swami gave them a watch or a chain they can buy i know so many people who can buy tons of those those are symbols but what connected them was love 
if it was not pure love, how does anyone, any being in this world remember so many names? All of us students know Swami has addressed us by our names. We are a few thousands now. How many lakhs of devotees know that Swami has called them by names? Each one of us take a paper and pen and jot down how many names we can recollect. And I say, dare say, we would not cross 500, 600, maybe some sharper minds, a thousand. But Swami's love was that. His connection was instant, always there. And that's how Swami would know everyone's name. That was Swami's power. And it did not stay with our student days also. Let me share with you another experience. So Swami, in after my MBA, Swami, uh, you know, I asked Swami, what do I do, you know? And uh, Swami said, go and join your father's business, yeah? which was in Jakarta in the garment exports. So I went and joined in 95. I came for my birthday um, to Swami. You know, every year I would come in 95 and I came. Swami said, I've told your father to start in India. Now you shift to India, shift to Bangalore. You know, and I said, I was very happy because, you know, I have always told my father, please don't mind me. You know, when I went to Indonesia, the first thing I told my father, please don't mind me saying, but at the maximum, I'll stay in Indonesia five years. After five years, let me go back to India. You know, allow me. Because Swami always spoke. Swami always spoke about how we as students have to think of our country, think of Bharat, you know. And uh, we'll come to that little later. But I, I always wanted to come. In fact, I had the, I mean, those days, I, they thought I was crazy. I had the idea of joining the army. You know, one of my classmates, uh, Brother Indreshwar, Raj Mata's grandson, he and I, we were very keen to join the army. And I said, wow, what a great thing it is to serve the country. So I mean, still so much of love for the country within us all. And Swami so said, no, you have other tasks to do. So he, we pursued MBA and then Swami so sent me to Indonesia, but I should my father in five years. So 95, Swami so tells me to come to India. I was more than happy, really, very, really, very happy. And Swami so blessed us by giving us a, a, key, a pair of keys and then he said go and stay in this so Swami mentioned the area uh, asked Uncle Bhutia to give me the keys and he said Baswan Gudi I've been in Bangalore in Whitefield I've never heard of that area where was Baswan Gudi and I said okay you know it's still Swami's keys so you know give it uh, you know we took it and we went and ventured it is old part very beautiful part Vani Vilas Road very beautiful part of uh, Bangalore we started doing there. Swami asked, uh, you know, we were supposed to construct our first factory in India. And Swami called me and said, you know, and I was very happy to get the opportunity to show the plans to Swami and said, this is the plan, Swami, please bless us. And this. And he asked me a question. He said, kitna uh, time lagta hai is ye construction ke liye? And I said, Swami, architect, blog ne bola, sub consultants ne bola. 24 months to 30 months. Swami straight away replied, Hey, Dunna Pota, Tum Swami ka student ya nahi? And I was like, Okay, what, where is this leading to? What has he got to do with it? He said, Swami ke project safe nine months me katam ho jata. I was just flabbergasted. Swami ka project, he said. You know, and I forgot that Swami actually gave the name of the company, Sai Lakshmi Industries. And Swami said, Swami Ka Project. You know, I was just stunned at that revelation. And I said, yes, Swami. He says, Jao, sabko bolo. Swami Ka Project, sif nine months. Hai. Nine months make a night. So I went, we met and I said, everybody, there is only nine months, no 24 months or 30 months. Then they argued, this is India, this is it. I said, please, I have no other reason to come here other than the fact Swami shifted me here. You know, I've not come here to set up my own things and things like that. Swami asked me to shift and he said, nine months. We must have faith. It can be done. Where are the issues? We pray. That's all I can say. And true enough, Swami 
stayed a lot. I remember during that one year or nine months, Swami came to Vrindavan quite a bit. Uh, Swami was monitoring the progress of the construction, would tell me where to focus on, how to go about it. And by Swami's will and grace, the first container for export went in the ninth month. You know, and even the consultants, even the construction people were like, this is not even possible. You know, they said they have never done that in India. And that I realized much, much later, what was the power? So if we un try to unlock what happened there, I'll go back further to the time when Swami declared he will build the hospital in Puttaparthi. When Swami announced next year, a hospital will be built in Puttaparthi, multi-specialty hospital, there was no land. But what did Swami do? Swami announced. When Swami announced, he created an intent, an absolute powerful, powerful intent, which is a very high form of energy. And believing in that energy, Swami makes things happen. Swami has always declared, I don't wait for money. For good work, the money will come. You know, and that is the power of intent. He reminded me actually in the construction. When our mind is 24 to 30 months, when the intent is not powerful, then lags, everything lags, everything goes down. I've done my MBA, but Swami had to teach me all over again. That business is created by a powerful intent. If we all sit down in today's times, especially and try to draft what business runs, all of us will say it's all going to be loss making. But all great business people had one thing, intent, the intent. This is what Swami actually does. He puts that powerful thought or powerful intent into our mind and then makes us drive towards that energy. Nine months was achieved because Swami reminded us that keep that powerful intent within you, you know? And it, I was once discussing with a few Sai devotees over here from the hospital and you know, a very nice sentence was told to me by Brother Srikant Shola. And he said, spirituality is not something where we sit down and say, Sai, Sai Ram, Sai Ram alone. Spirituality is quite aggressive by itself. We have to be clear as to what the purpose is. Why are we born on this earth? What positive impact can we do to this world that makes it into a better world? Swami did not just say, sit down, just meditation and no. Swami started a hospital, created a purpose. MBA boys put into the hospital. They did not know what was operation. They did not know procedures. They, Swami showed in so many ways that when your intent is clear, you have a purpose that is for a greater good. Then everything is aligned. You're aligned with that power of that universe. And when you're aligned with that power of the universe, things start shaping, shaping up. Recently in my, I had this good fortune in the last few months to be with my father. Again and again, he reminds me and he says, whatever you do, do it with faith. When you say Swami, have that full faith in Swami. You know, so going back to the incident in business, in life, business is nothing but an aspect of life. In life, the intent has to be clear. The intent has to be powerful, whatever we want to be. That intent has to be absolute and having full faith in the intent. That was one major lesson that Swami was teaching uh, me again. You know, though I've done MBA, he felt that you needed some lesson and that was what he did. His coming, his monitoring was to encourage, to understand how to go about administratively. We, we all, none of us knew the size of the Central Trust, but we all learned about it. And we see how Swami operated such a large, beautiful trust without any 
any problems at all with just absolute smoothness, giving so much of positive back to society because the intent that Swami came to this world was very clear. You know, Manav Seva, Madhav Seva, the, the importance of karma, the importance of bhajans, Sai Nam, you know, that those Nam Smaran, those things were so powerful that Swami kept, kept on doing. You know, another incident that I can share with you all was we went through a lot of difficulty between 2009 and 2011. And I kept wondering how to go about it. We had a few, uh, more than a hundred cases on us. We had financial problems. We had, you know, and how to go about it. And I, you know, my father and I, went to Swami, we sat for a month, Swami would look but not talk and we were wondering, okay, creditors are, you know, beginning to get jittery, what these guys are up to, are they running away to Puttaparthi and settling there? You know, how people will think and we were like trying to figure out how, how to go about it. It was a nasty experience. Swami went up to my father and said, you know, uh, you go and tackle Indonesia, both in Indonesia and India, we face huge problems, financial problems. Yeah? And, and, you know, then Swami said, you tackle Indonesia. Uh, he knew my father was much more evolved soul and with his implicit faith to Swami, Swami, Swami will guide him through the inner voice. I was slightly not that evolved at that point of time and I needed a physical guidance. So Swami looked at me and said, Huh, but how kya kya problem then? And I was telling Swami, this is this people, they are after land, the government, this bank is after this problem, this, this. Swami say, looked at me with a smile, hearing all the issues I was, and nothing seemed to be, you know, he, he didn't look a bit worried or for me or whatever. He was more like, he said, Dunya Pota, tum abhi manyu jaisa hai. <laughs> I looked at it, I said, okay. You know, I'm in the midst of all this and I don't know why am I uh, like Abhimanyu. He said, half knowledge. And I said, no, Swami. And obviously, I didn't know. That's why Swami is asking me. And Swami said, Tumara land se tum both attachment hai. Wahi problem hai. Number one problem wahi hai. Tum darta hai. Land jayega, land jayega, dhart hai. Is liye kuch bhi akal mein nahi aata hai. To chakra view mein hai. Iske andar wo kaise jana hai, nahi dekh sakta hai. Abhi manyo ho gaya tum. What a marvelous lesson. Swami, uh, Swami really guided me through that. And, uh, and I, it took me a long, long time, probably 25, 26 or 27 years after college that I realized that actually Swami is using us as tools. You know, Swami, we feel attached to everything. And during this COVID time, I said, my God, one virus put the whole global, all of us in a standstill. And those of us who believe in Swami are some, somehow been still being carried by him, being able to talk, being able to smile, being able to remember him. That's, that's his power. What are we attached to? If we call ourselves tools, if we call ourselves, we just really bow our heads, place it to Swami and say, you do it with us. Give us the opportunity to be used as your instrument. How hollow are we? to be that flute from which music actually comes up. That's a question I ask every day. That's a question I ask myself. Am I worthy? How do I make myself more and more worthy? It's so beautiful. His love is so beautiful. <clears throat> Swami is you know, to many times we've asked uh, Swami, uh, you know, we wish to be with you, we wish to do this with you, we wish to do this. Swami really doesn't need anybody. He's, his supreme power 
in indonesia we've seen where even in some mosque where my father or some of the devotees would go where there's a photo of swami swami is reach there before any of us so if any of us live in this world thinking we are doing for swami we are living in absolute ignorance we can't do for swami we are very tiny bit you know swami used to once say if you look from the universe what are you we are probably smaller than an atom so we really can't do for swami we can only pray to be given the opportunity to serve him in whatever way he does and that sometimes the attachment to wealth the attachment to things that we possess you know some during this period let me share something i from between february and now uh, let me share this whole experience with you i had to look for uh, spay, uh, the place for my daughter she got accepted by swami's grace into one of the best universities in the world for for design and i wanted to look uh, for a space the right space for her and i prayed swami to guide me and i flew to london i was in milan before that i flew to london i flew to new york just completely intent with with the work that was there and i kept saying swami will guide me and everywhere i left it was as if i was leaving a trail of covid behind it just got worse in every city and until i landed into uh, bangalore on the 19th of march uh, my daughter had to leave uti school because they had to close down the school and i landed at 19th only to find that five i landed at 9:30 in the evening only to land uh at, at to learn that at 5:30 in the evening all oci holders my nationality is indonesian and all oci holders were not allowed inside the country so here i am in bangalore not allowed inside the country and i kept praying you know swami has been so kind that uh prior to all these happening i had a, a wonderful sister from the sai family who joined me and she uh, you know she went and picked up my daughter to swami's grace in time from coimbatore and brought her back and i just prayed i said swami my daughter is like this i have to return i'm deported now to indonesia whatever your intention is i was initially upset and things like that being a human when i spoke to my wife she said look you can't be upset you must remember whatever is happening is because of swami's will alone you know and i prayed i said well i know covid is there i know this virus is some crazy virus none of us are able to understand and so be it whatever it is your will i'll book a ticket since i'm deported to indonesia i i bought a ticket to jakarta you know and i went i stayed the night being deported you, it, you become sort of a case so you you can't get around without being escorted around and uh, so be it by to sleep on the chair you know and the next day singapore airlines was supposed to take me to indonesia their flight got cancelled here i am without clothes without medicines you know without anything and i'm just praying so me so be it another night passed by in bangalore airport in departure and i prayed you know then the news came in indonesia they're going to test everyone whoever comes for covid test and i prayed so me covid not covid i don't know all i know is i'm going with the direction you are setting the next night i could get into the flight uh, the next night was cancelled then the previous morning so two nights in bangalore next morning the as singapore airlines could take me to singapore but there was no connecting flight to jakarta so again by his will i went to singapore and again being a deep case who was deported though you know i was with the police i couldn't access any lounge anything i had to stay in a place that was unlike singapore and uh, and i said swami if this is your will so be it i go through it and i'll then the next day i stayed a night in that place in the airport in singapore at the police place and then i reached jakarta they te- they looked at me and they said where are you from one thing swami taught us is never to lie so then the notice is written all those who have been recently from new york 
you know, we'll have to go through stringent tests. And, uh, and I said, yes, I did come in from New York. I've been three days uh, between India and Singapore, and now I'm here. And they looked, they said, you look healthy, go. First sign, Swami showing how his presence is there, how he enters, so, you know, he guides us through. And then I, I went, I went, I was worried, like what will happen to my daughter? She's alone. My wife is in Jakarta. My son is still in New York and I'm here and I don't know, you know, with the COVID, every, you, they said, you know, India, we, we went through a very, very stern, which was appropriately so, but stern time. My daughter, I called her and I said, listen, you need to know that situation. I don't know what to tell next, what to expect. And she's calm and she's saying, don't worry, dad. You know, I know everything will be fine. So don't be worried. Hearing her like that, I got conviction. And I realized I spent about three and a half months in Indonesia that how important it is that during that time, I got and bonded even more uh, with my father and my mother. And uh, it was so important because my, my son did return to Indonesia from New York. And he learned of my father's experiences directly from my father's mouth. That I think is the greatest impact. That is the will of Swami because if he hears it from me, it's different. But when he hears things from my own father, it is a completely different experience because it's one to one experience. And that built his faith, that changed my son so much that whatever I tried to teach in five years before that, he learned in those three months. And that's what I was reminded that whatever happens, trust it because it is Swami's process. You know, and uh, Brother Arunish also, I, like I said, said Swami is a goldsmith. And I used to wonder in, you know, when I finished, uh, when I finished my studies, Swami quickly did my, or my marriage in Whitefield. And I looked at Swami and said, I haven't earned anything. I haven't got anything. Why are you doing this? I'm not ready for marriage. And Swami said, this is your karma. You have to go through it. And Swami kept calling me, introducing me to everyone as the gold medalist. And I know I did not get gold medalist in my batch. I wasn't the gold medalist. But he insisted, yeah, boy, gold medalist. Yeah, boy, gold medalist. And during these last three and a half months, it, I realized, my God, this last 27 years, you know, since, uh, since I finished college till now, what all Swami has taken me through, he's been chiseling me. So he was not, he was actually conveying to me, my dear, you're, you're going to have to learn a lot more. College was just a training ground. Life now is with you. And I've seen few years where I didn't care so much for the teaching. And I've seen the sadness I felt and I've seen the peace that I got when I came back. Literally, Swami had to warn my father and tell your boy to come and meet me or I will stop talking to him. That was a big disaster. It was fine till, you know, Swami was fine. But Swami not talking at all is a big disaster for me. And literally, I came back to him and Swami treated as if nothing happened. I knew what I did, you know, and Swami just accepted me. And that is the true mother. That is time and again when he shows you that he is mother. A mother accepts you. He will chisel you. He will guide you. He will teach you the things. But when you are ready to come back to him, he just accepts you. The readiness is not from the mouth. The readiness has to be from the heart. And that to me has always time and again, Swami has shown we all crave for him. We say, we miss you. We miss you. And he's trying to tell us now, why are you missing me when you know I'm inside you? I'm with you. I'm, I'm communicating to you. You know, and Swami, once one of us asked uh, a nice question, how to be with you all the time? You say inside, inside, but you know, we are like human beings. We, we don't see inside. We are so used to our physical eyes. Swami gave a wonderful reply. He said, everything that you do, just keep telling, Swami, I've got up now. Swami, I'm going and brushing my teeth now. Swami, I'm going for work now. Swami, I'm going to college now. Swami, 
by telling everything that you are doing first to Swami, you are actually connecting. And Swami is with you. Look at Swami. I mean, in the most simple way, when he says Nam Smaran, he knew that all of us can't sing bhajan 24 hours a day, you know. Uh, we probably will give one hour a day or those of us who are more fortunate can give two hours, one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening. And that's what we think Nam Smaran as, is singing bhajans. But Swami made it much more simple. He just said, keep telling me what you're doing. Swami, I'm going to meet my mother. Swami, I'm going to talk to my child. Swami, I'm going to see my daughter. It's a simple, probably 10 seconds sentence that we have to tell Swami every time that we are going to do. And Swami connects with us. That's it. That was uh, the simplest explanation of the highest lessons of how to connect with God all the time. And that is the beauty of Swami. That is why we all love him so much. Because he teaches us in some just simple way. Of course, sometimes we take it for granted that it's so simple, but it is so deep that every time if all we do is to mention to Swami, we are going to do this. Swami, we're going to sing a bhajan. Swami, we're going to do aarti now. Swami, we're going to sleep now. So good night, Swami. Good morning, Swami. We are always connected to Swami. And what happens in that? All of us vibrate with that feel of Swami to the next person. That vibration is the connection, is the fastest form of internet connection that we have with another person in our life. Because Swami always said, in one of, our, uh, in one of my experiences, Swami called me in front of all the VIPs to be in the veranda and Swami said, who, boy, Indonesia, he used to call me two things, Chota Puri, Indonesia, Chota Puri, when good times were coming, Indonesia, something serious is coming. Uh, I could get that hint from Swami. So he said, Indonesia, come here. And I walked up to Swami. And Swami was standing near in front of his interview room in the veranda and uh, in front of all the VIPs. He said, who am I? Oh, first thing I did was to look around me and wow, lots of big VIPs over there. I have to give the appropriate answer, you know. And I instantly answered what I thought is the right answer. Swami, you're God, you know, like, like a machine, I answered it. Swami looks at me and said, so are you. The difference is, I realize it and you do not realize. And don't say something that you do not believe from your heart. I was stunned at that time. And I realized what happened. That I thought I had to make a show in front of people. But Swami wanted our genuinity. Swami wanted us to speak, to feel from our heart. Even if we are to do work, if we are to do business, if it is not from our heart, it's never going to be successful. It's as simple as that. It's the conviction, you know, that intention that becomes a conviction, the supreme intention that becomes a conviction that leads us to the right action. That is all that Swami expects from us. The alignment that he said, thought, word, and deed. You know, so many beautiful lessons Swami taught us. And every time he insisted on that. You know, uh, the, I, I did mention that how Swami works. Swami allows my father, uh, my father, for me, he's a big idol in terms of his faith in Swami. And I've seen the way he works. And I've seen in my early days in 93, when I joined this business, you know, in uh, 94, we suddenly, I, I was proud actually. I was getting old, my marketing skills were getting better and I felt I was doing a lot of things. And I was telling my father that, you know, I'm getting on an average, in those days we were producing uh, maybe 25, 30,000 pieces a day. So. I was saying that I could get 50 cents more from the buyers, you know, uh, on an average. My average is 50 cents more than before. It was like telling him, see, I got better price than you. And he looked at me and said, there is something Swami wants us to do. That's why you're getting better price. And then Swami, you know, and we were getting more and more price. And Swami told us about the India project. You know, where those things happened and Swami gave us the opportunity with the music school. 
and we realized that my god i was so i felt so humble that my father was just this empty flute who allowed swami to play the music and never never in his life have i heard him that i have achieved this every time the company made profits he said swami has some work for us swami has some work for us to me i think that was one of the biggest lessons that i learned that we are all given opportunities i had don't know if i've shared before but i had this single interview with swami once swami called me during bhajans inside and he said open this letter and i opened letter uh, this was in 91 or 92 and swami said what is it you know it was a it was a check or of in those days joysh mark of a huge sum in doj mark and swami said close it send it back to him tell him this is not the time and this is the beauty of swami he never never goes around asking for money he knew who would he choose to participate in the seva all of us who have an office bearing all of us who was given the ability to contribute through our physical energy through our mental brilliance to through our mental creativity or through our businesses are nothing but tools of swami i think the day we give up that we will lose all that swami has given us a beautiful example of how arjuna could not even save a few people when after krishna and when he thought what are my powers and it's his powers are nothing without krishna and that is what swami has been trying to tell all of us if we have a great voice yeah i i know i mean i've had this beautiful opportunity to to have grown up as a child with brother ravi kumar with so many of those beautiful singers in putpati and i know that that bhavam is not trained bhavam is that bhavam that swami put inside their voices that connects us all i i've seen that i've seen how tears roll down the devotees when they just hear i have been a witness to a person who today is my father in law who came to uh, with me when he was uh, beginning to forget things and he connected to bhajan he was clapping he couldn't even speak a word earlier and he was connecting to bhajan he was able to sing it and recollect everything and i was looking at him and saying wow he remembers every single bhajan that is that power that swami puts inside every of those voices that sings in putpati none of them could build without swami none of us can build anything anything without the power of swami and for me that is the biggest power or miracle of swami you know and every time i i used to wonder what is what is it that we do to swami this is one person who really beautifully said that when we pray it's when we talk to god and when we meditate we listen to god as a as a college student i was so not so keen about meditation i would say action you know we have to do sports we have to do music we have to do dance drama until what happened in 2011 when i felt suddenly my god i lost i lost something i feared to come back to bangalore i feared to go back to putpati i feared everything around me i feared uh, you know when swami took samadhi i just didn't know what to do i i felt lost and in that moment you know i was guided i was guided to listen to swami just by closing my eyes and having faith in him and i've seen miracles i've seen miracles of government taking over the land giving it back within 6 months i've seen things where i thought wow swami is just showing his physical presence every single time not his physical presence we are his physical presence can we become that can we actually become the swami has declared so many times that each one of you have to be an institution of each student bears that responsibility to be a, a, a my institution can we be that 
you know that's a question we always ask you know and swami till today is always is always is always with us and what does swami say once i always wonder why india why did swami pull me back to it, india when when we started the exports swami looked at me and said boy remember one thing whatever you do out of india make bharat's name proud and let me give you a small incident you know uh, we were spinning mill started things were going swami blessed he came he opened he walked through the mill you know he walked through the office he sat it was the most beautiful time that we had swami gave us such beautiful opportunities and then swami uh, you know and things were happening one guy in switzerland contacted me and said i want your yarn i'll book for the whole year you know but i want one thing you should not write that it's made in india the moment he said that some of swami's words came back to me and said make bharat's name proud so i said no sir i can't do it he said listen i'm giving he was really giving me a premium price almost when we were producing 20 tons a day he was providing 10 at least 10 cents per ton higher so it was 2000 uh, a day increase in price you know for us and he said i'm booking it for one year one year lc i'll open you keep shipping but no no made in india name because then i will sell this as a swiss quality i said i said no simply then my technical director my father my my other director asked me why why did you refuse such a good deal i said i don't know but swami said you know make bharat's name proud so if i can't write made in india how do i fulfill that sentence and people were confused you know my father left it to me he didn't know what to say because i was just blindly following what swami said and that guy got upset he cancelled he said i can't take it and i said swami <laughs> i don't know but i'm following you you know just use give me give me the path you know and trust me within a month we got a contract with another person who wanted to prove that the indian yarn was as good because he was exporting to england his fabrics and to the rest of europe and gave us 25 cents higher per per per, per kilo so that's much higher profits for the company from day one that is what swami said and my father this time reminded me implicit faith when he says something know that it is for the best that's it it's for the best don't question the time don't question why don't question just know it is for the best that implicit faith in his word that is the most important thing when uh, we passed through the covid uh, you know people were worried when we will come back to india we were wondering we were saying no the time is right and somehow my wife said in july swami will take us there there was no flight then we came to know by mid august the government of india will announce what flights were there you know and uh, we said that means till august also no no chance how do we do go about it and we were saying no by july we are going to be there swami somehow will get us there and we leave it to swami how to do it then we prayed swami will get us there we asked the embassy of india they said no the bharat mission thing has ended nothing from jakarta so none we still asked because our duty is to ask you know because if we say our duty is to ask there's nothing to lose from asking and then suddenly they said there is the tamil sangam association that is arranging a flight but you have to go to trichy said if this is swami's will so be it you know and we took the flight many people told us why trichy tamil nadu government is going to shut down for a month you'll be in trichy for a month we said no we asked swami to help us to go back to india within two days we got this path we will be there in trichy you know by swami's grace the flight went on time very well organized you know by swami's grace we when we reached the airport we met people who were organizing knew about us they made us comfortable we landed at the airport everything was so smooth there was a lot of conditions of oci we did not fulfill any of these conditions 
but we the you know we spoke to the embassy they said sir you go once you land they won't take you we said thank you that's the answer from swami let's go there and we went everything landed smooth we were booked into a covid uh, a, you know nominated hotel in trichy we went then we came to know that there is something called as a second test in the hotel so a lot of confusion you know we got we had to book uh, online the pass to come to karnataka to leave tamil nadu we all know in india what were the procedures we just kept doing and everything things kept happening we said if it's on me it will it'll happen you know and that's it so me just uh, we were on the 7th we landed on the 14th we came to know we have to get we have to get something like a permit from the department uh, officer and then we were not knowing whether there was a second test we asked a few side devotees over there they said sir please go ahead leave so swami so we went and gone ahead 15 minutes after leaving and we just we prayed and said swami you guide us we got on our message a release order from the government stating that we this entire list of passengers which our names were included need not go through a second test in trichy and can go to bangalore and a letter was given to the bangalore department that they have to decide how to deal with us we came to bbmp swami guided us you know when i say swami guided a thought came to our mind two three days prior to leaving to bangalore that maybe we should ask our cars to come to the border we did that we didn't know the rules too many things you know what was going on until the next day we came with our cars woman the next day somebody called me up and sir are you in bangalore already yes we are sir how did you get in bangalore how did the tamil nadu car, car was allowed into bbmp and we said okay we didn't know it was not allowed so we chose this car and the fact is that swami puts thoughts into our mind and tell us that you know everything is happening only because i put thoughts in your mind all you have to do is to have implicit faith in me and that's how swami is implicit faith so swami said you know it is always there so and swami said to us make bharat proud i read upon this beautiful thing that when swami said actually in chapter 34 in sri satya sai speaks volume 23 allow me to read this when everything is available within bharat why go begging to other countries everything has originated from bharat hence having taken birth in bharat strive to promote the glory of bharat every devotee should take a pledge to protect and promote the greatness of bharat like an elephant that does not know its own strength we bharatiyas are unaware of their power despite their myriad capacities they are behaving as weaklings like an elephant before its mahot you have to get rid of this weakness strive to make india strong and happy so that it may not be dependent on other countries or even become vulnerable she was once the guru of human humanity let her assume that role again lead a life in such a manner that you are respected and revered as a child of bharat a life that will be an example and inspiration for all what are our uh, if we ask ourselves today what are our duties over here for those of us staying in india our duties is to make us proud of who we are we are the descendants of the gods of the greatest civilization of krishna of such great people of great saints we need to remember that spirituality like i said requires us to have the energy to move forward to build businesses to build life that increases the positive impact we can have on all human beings you know many times uh, swami once reminded me when we sang that bhajan sai charan sukha daiman we sang it as mat jao sai man mandir me swami looked and said i'm never leaving you and then it got changed to bas aao sai man mandir me never leave us but swami will not leave us provided we give that space to him don't fill ourselves with fear with doubt with all funny funny things inside our mind let us always have that implicit faith implicit love for who is, for who is, he is you know and 
let me just share a small bhajan you know that that really has inspired me during this period yeah so i i hope i've not taken too much time just a small one din dayala param kripala swami you are that the person who gives to all of us who are poor in our mind poor in our feelings you are that person who gives that absolute param kripala you know teri darshan hum tarse rahe tum ho hamare mata pita prabhu swami even our parents have told us that you are our mother and father there is no one other than you tum ho hamare mata pita prabhu tum ho hamare pran ishwaram banal dana kuch pati ba to mother ishwaramma you are always that little baba of kuch pati jagat paripana prashanti ba swami ji is the administrator of this entire universe you are actually the resident of prashanti jagat paripana and swami you who is this administrator of this entire universe you are actually the resident of our heart and with that i thank you all for being with me for allowing me to always be connected with swami i thank the organizers for this wonderful opportunity om shri sai ram yeah uh sairam brother uh, i hope i am audible yes very much okay now i think uh, it was an absolutely a very different and very blissful uh, session we did, did not realize you know when it became 750 or 745 so quickly and uh, but some of the very very important messages i think uh, you gave and maybe you know i can highlight couple of them a few of them Uh, just as a key takeaway for us you know before we end the session i think the first one i think you said bhajan is a seva i think except i think barring one in the past i think nobody explained us so beautifully that bhajan is you know how you help people connect god so bhajan singers and bhajan group as such uh, has a big responsibility uh, you know to almost like acting like a guru to connect the masses to god so that's a very big take away for all the music lovers and even uh, singers and music group for us as a whole and i think second very powerful message which you gave about uh, the powerful intent you know which uh, swami kind of you know said you know moment he said nine months for your sai lakshmi industries so i think that's a key leadership lesson i think which we all can carry home it's it's across it's not just about swami's work everything is swami's work in that sense uh, if we have a firm belief and conviction and we, it's a great lesson for us that if anything we want to do in life uh, you know this is a learning coming directly from swami that if we have a very powerful intent and also if i add as you said thought word and we coming together with complete faith i think uh, you know each one of us can actually replicate the divine energy which swami is within us in that form and actually manifest in front of us i think this is something for us as sai devotees is extremely important to carry because the future generations will know through our actions when swami says your life will become my message i think this is a very powerful take away for us that we must learn this from swami's life uh, and how to kind of you know manifest what we really want uh, to do in life and you know that's a great uh, lesson and i think uh, 
a very another very very important message which you gave was you know swami is you know although he is a creator of the world but he resides in the heart and he is with us all the time i think very many experiences you know towards the you know as you said when even in covid times when he is around us he takes care of us because a lot of people have questions how do we connect to swami and you know today when swami's physical form is not accessible how do we you know find swami i think your experience about that entire experience of uh, singapore and going to indonesia via new york i think it, it clearly you know re manifest that faith that you know swami is with us all the time and doesn't matter whether you are in india or anywhere in the world and swami we all know that is beyond time and space so till today also swami is with us he is looking after us and when you have a kalpuruksh like him with us i think what covid i think covid or any other virus can never touch us by any means so i think with this we should vanish all the if at all there are any fears in the minds of any of us we should completely you know disappear because we have got god with us walking with you know hand to hand in our life and that's a very powerful message there are many i think you know we can have a long list of it uh but these are the three key takeaway takeaways that you know all of us uh, on this call you know on this session we should carry home and uh, you know before uh, we we conclude i think there are a few questions here which we would uh, you know take up from the people here so that you know we can get to know uh, more in fact there is one experience of indonesia temple uh, you know which uh, i think you briefly touched upon maybe you would like to elaborate because that is where i think uh, swami himself you know manifested and came there during the course of building the temple and that is in indonesia so not even in india so maybe you like to elaborate that experience so briefly uh, this was in bali they wanted to construct a beautiful temple of uh, swami and bali has a lot of uh, you know it's basically largely hindu culture so they wanted to create that atmosphere beautiful devotees in the in bali the way they sing bhajans i'm always amazed that i mind prashanti nilayam you know they really work hard to get their pronunciation right they had this urge to build this beautiful temple for swami construction was going on and you know in in a short period they completed this construction and then you know they they wanted to put swami's faith so the workers over there said hey hey, hey you know don't put why why you putting this person's photo he is still alive you know they thought you put a photo of someone who is not there he is still alive and he, they said yes he is alive and he said yeah i mean he is coming every day to us these are the construction workers yeah and uh, and they said what do you mean he said he is the one coming every day and telling us we thought he is from you all how the you know carving should be how this should be in place that every day he comes and then we have a little bit of food from him and he goes off so who is this and people in bali were shocked this is swami and they created that little place where swami apparently used to walk to this construction worker this is the power of swami that's why i always my father and i always say if we think we are reaching out to people for swami we are very foolish you know swami is already there is making us comfortable <laughs> preparing the place for us to come actually you know this is a brief thing what happened in bali actually it's beautiful amazing so i think similarly on i think the meerpuri college of music you know uh, what went behind uh, the scene you know before that entire college that we see today so uh being uh, being blessed to have been allowed to be part of the music group of Uh, you know during my student days one i remember a few times where we were, it was tough for us to do recording in the planetarium it used to take whole whole nights and poor ravi had to sing a bhajan in the morning after staying awake for the whole night you know i keep saying he's a he's a real miracle of swami because he still keeps singing and he himself doesn't know sometimes how his voice is still singing well when the time is come you know he's so humble he always says this is only swami's will but knowing that these were the problems of, you know i after swami said to go back to indonesia i spoke to my father and said that can we build a recording studio for swami you know it's sincere very, very deep within my heart you know that can we do a recording studio that so swami you know in the in interviews between 93 till the music school till the construction started swami would ask ha kya chahiye 
okay swami recording studio swami recording studio and suddenly swami announces of the music school trust me none of us thought of music school we ne- i never even heard of that we all know music is taught by a guru the guru, guru shishya parav you know those those ways of doing what is music school nothing and just it is swami's vision and he just blesses us that's all he does he gives credit to people that he wants to bestow his blessings not that we did anything we were asking for a very swami asked me i remember two years before the construction swami asked me kitna size hai ye project i said so i calculated you know sound system this i to 1 crore hoga swami and nahi 10 crore and i used to think why 10 crore what kind of equipment is swami thinking 10 crore hoga you know and i didn't none of us thought that such a wonderful school would come up that is the truth behind the music school that's what he is the doer we are all only instruments none of us can say anything other than that you know other than being grateful that we were used as instruments that's all we can do you know very beautiful i think that's another important uh, you know message that we get is you know, we are but instruments we feel that we do but end of the day it is he who gets it done and in hindsight we realize that you know what he did was the best and he has you know we follow his instructions in life as it is i think that's one of the very important message uh, and i think we have uh, shri nimesh pandey also on the call our all india president of our satisai organization oh sir uh, sir shankar you would like to speak few words before we close oh, no just to say to tell harish that this is such an amazing part of his devotion to bhagwan that i am really so um, awestruck when i have known harish time and again and as he said he was man of action but this devotional dimension of his understanding is so deep and so imp- i am really impressed harish god bless you thank god you. coming thank from you thank you sir um pleasure is with you and uh, it's i mean we've all we've all been blessed you and your experiences restored our hearts definitely i love them professor thank you oh, very beautiful so i think a uh, lot of things lot of takeaways uh, i think it will be wonderful idea to go back to this and watch the video once it is released uh, and uh, you know this is something which is rekindling lot of uh, uh, faith and devotion in many people's hearts and i think the timeliness of this satsang is also we are very close to krishna janmashtami also so greetings to everybody on the eve of krishna janmashtami let us carry our sai krishna in our hearts and uh, heartfelt gratitude to you brother harish for sharing your time and your experiences with us you have taken us to a very different level and for many days to come you know definitely if not more we will be reminiscing these experiences again so thanks to everyone yeah sai ram sai ram thank you sai ram sai ram let's close this with uh, samasta loka and uh, that's about it sai ram समस्त लोका सुखी नो भवंतु समस्त लोका सुखी नो भवंतु समस्त लोका सुखी नो भवंतु ओ शांति 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 जय बोलो भगवान श्री सत्य साई बाबा जी की जय साई राम